Stay tuned for another episode of My Comics where I go through a short box of 90s books. <laughs> Hey comic book fans, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0 and fans, yes you're with me Mike Spider Slayer, getting ready to bring you another episode of my comics, that's right fans, this is the video series where I go through my entire collection like it's the first time and I show you what books are inside my short boxes and my long boxes. So last week we wound up finishing up my three part series of my mysterious DC New 52 long box and today we're going to be diving into a short box of 90s comic books. I think it's Marvel books. Uh, I'm not sure what's in this box. I haven't looked in it in a very long time. So let's check out guys and let's see what's in this short box, shall we? Alright, so as I am here, yes, this is the box we're going through today. The 90s Marvel comics. The decade that defined comic books. It had its downs, it had its ups, but mainly its downs. So let's check out and see what's inside. All right. Oh, we can start off seeing that we got the Avengers there. So let's go ahead and get set up and we'll get going here. All right. So the first one we pulled out is boom, just like I said. Or we saw in that box, the Avengers. The first spectacular issue from Marvel Comics in 1996. Rob Liefeld and Jim Valentino. Ah, uh, yes. This is so ironic that I kind of pulled this out today because I watched a video on YouTube on what went wrong with Heroes Reborn when it came to... Uh, Marvel Comics and then this book is the first one I pull out when I show this collection But this is a really downtime for Marvel Comics um, Not great stuff people make fun of this run all the time. So yes. Oh my god. This brings back so many memories So with that being said we have uh, the continuing of this. I don't know what happened to the other uh, issues of this but nevertheless life felt at this point from what I know, it was off of this series um, by issue six, and we have a different writer at this time. So I guess Marvel is just sitting there licking its wounds going, okay, we got to get back to normal here. So this is issue 11 of the series. I actually like this cover better than this particular cover, right? So like X-Men, X-Force-like with the big teeth and no pupils. And this one looks more traditional like uh, when it comes to the characters that you know and love. All right, so next one we're going to be talking about is issue 12 of the same run here. So we get to see Heroes Reunited, uh, part two of four, Simonson, Ryan, Wynn. Those are the, the people attached to this book at this time. Uh, kind of cool cover. I guess it's a wraparound cover. I guess you can see there. Um, four looks completely different. Look at Wasp. Uh, if that's Janet, like look at the armor that she's wearing there and the over-exaggerated wings uh, vision. Look at how long as cape is. So that's kind of crazy right there. All right. And then we have issue 13, uh, World War Part 2 of 4, World War 3. And this is Heroes Reunited Part 2 of 4. I don't even know what's going on with these story arts. But there we have... Uh, uh, is that Atlas or Giant Man or whatever it is? I don't know. There's a scroll in there. So it looks like you got some Fantastic Four characters maybe in there. Who knows? I have no idea what this book was about back in the day. All right. And then we have an actual real book. Um, this is Earth's Mightiest Heroes, The Avengers issue 32. So we have that particular issue. Um, this book was 225 back in the day. Not even sure exactly when it was made, uh, but there you get to see some of the more traditional like characters on this cover. So Madam Mask, I think, is there. So that's kind of cool. All right, and then we have. Well, this is. I don't think this is the 1990s, but whatever the case, it's in here. <laughs> we have 
Uh, Brian Michael Bendis's and uh, Dodato's artwork in here. Really nice looking cover. Uh, I think this is um, you got Miss Marvel and Captain America, and you got Wolverine on there. So that's really cool. So yeah, somehow this got mixed in with the '90s books, but yeah, it's not a '90s book. But we'll go back to the '90s book by checking out this particular issue right here. We have Cable issue 56. Uh, he's got his gun ablazing. Behold the harbinger of apocalypse. So this is a double-sized 50th issue, spectacular. So I don't know if this is during the age of apocalypse. Uh, very possibly could be. All right. Oh yeah. So now you're talking about books at its finest in the 90s. Oh boom! Right there, the Secret Defenders, Thanos on its cover. Right? Uh-oh. How come Thanos is on this cover? And you get to see, like, this sparkly eyeball stuff. I think it's cool. I think it looks really awesome, man. I actually recently got this book. You know, I, I try to pick these up from time to time because it just brings back nostalgia for me and how gimmicky these, these covers were back in the day. So it's awesome. Let's see. Next we have Fantastic Four Unlimited. Look at this. Let's check out that one right there. First giant size collector's item issue. $3.95. Um, guest starring the Black Panther. So look at the thing on here. Um, look at <laughs> look at Sue. Like why is she so exaggerated and skinny? She's more like Reed Richards here. And then look at look at his eyes. He's like he's like totally look at that. He's like evil. He's got this crazy backpack and big ass gun. Johnny Storm always looks the same, but yeah, that's kind of weird, man. Avengers Assemble, 30th edition. So, oh, 1993, based off of what this says right here. So yeah, that's cool. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, this is so great. I can't wait to get to the next comic. Ghost Rider, issue 13. So that's really cool. Um, yeah, and I don't know who that is right there, but it's like a more like a photorealistic type of cover. Um, and you got, I guess that's Johnny Blaze on there at the time, and he's just riding his bike, and yeah, that's kind of cool. But forget that one. Let's move on to this one. This one right here. So if you guys checked out my video of um, where do I begin in collecting comics, I went into a little detail of certain books that I collected and I'm gonna be doing a follow-up video about talking about my comic book origin story like how I got into collecting comics and what characters I started following first and stuff like that so look for that very soon but this cover right here oh man this was the shit this thing glue in the glowed in the dark I hung this up on my wall you can see like right here like look at that you could see like the little pinhole on the um, on the bag and board because I hung it on my wall all that time and I just would turn off the lights and it would glow <laughs> man it was awesome it's so cool all right next we have Ghost Rider issue 16 uh here we got the uh Hobgoblin on there Spider-Man I don't know who that is um but yeah I'm surprised I have this many Ghost Rider books I'm usually not into the character but I think I did it because of Spider-Man right there so again, more um, Ghost Rider, Spider-Man, Hobgoblin. Keep your distance, Spider-Man. Hobgoblin is mine. So we got that going on there. So let's check out more. I have two. Oh, I have two of this issue. Is this, are you kidding me? Like, why would I even have two of these? That is, that's bad. That's not a good thing. <laughs> I should give that one away. Here's another good one. Check out that. I've had this book for a very long time. This board is actually looks like shit. I should replace it. But anyway, Ghost Rider issue 18. That is a nice looking cover right there. All right. Next. Bam. Ghost Rider issue 21. Snow blinded. He's got this stake through his eyeball. And then he's got like these chains wrapped around him. So that's kind of cool too. Man, this book is in really good shape. If if Ghost Rider was ever worth anything, I, 
you know, look at that. It's a white cover. When do you see white covers look so good like that? All right, next. The Ghost Rider keeps continuing, baby. Ghost Rider, issue 23. Death Watch will die for this. You know, the one cool thing you gotta like about Ghost Rider, though, if anything, if his books suck, is he's got cool freaking covers, man. Even the little box in there looks badass. All right, next we have Ghost Rider issue 27 in the X-Men. You know I had to collect this because of the X-Men, that in itself. So, yeah. We got some more Ghost Rider. Dude. Oh, okay, I thought these were... I thought these were two of the same. Look how identical those two look. And uh, that's definitely not 90s because we didn't have dot coms back then. Well, at least when I was around in the 90s, at least in the early 90s. So we have one and two of this series. So we got the direct editions right here. So I don't care about that because it's not 90s. This is definitely 90s. Daredevil, 97 and Deadpool Annual. So we got that one too. Oh look, more Heroes Reborn. The Return, Part 1, Issue 4. We got Franklin Richards on there. And I guess what he does in this series is he brings back the uh, the heroes to kind of like more what they once were. So that was kind of like his power there. Uh, I wonder if Peter David actually uh, did that book. Because here you have Heroes Reborn, The Return, Part 2 of 4. And uh, that's a very traditional like book right there. And then you have Part 3. And obviously now I, I don't see Part 4 in here, so who knows where it's going. Uh, but I don't have that one there. Don't have that. All right, what's next in this box? All right, so we have Issue 364 of The Incredible Hulk. This is the countdown, 4321, The Abomination. This is part four uh, of that series. And here I have part three of that same series. Okay. And once I get done with this series, I'm gonna move this. And then we have part two. All right. Check out the leader, dude. He just looks weird. The drawings in this are just, I don't know. And then there's part one, which is like this guy here with thumbs down. He's like, thumbs down. I don't like your YouTube video. <laughs> oh, boy. So we got this. Uh, oh, boy. Here's another one, man. Issue one of Nomad. <laughs> How much is that worth? Oh, my gosh. 1992. Look at Nomad's hair. Look at his big trench coat and his glasses. It's like Terminator with long hair. And he's got the big N on his belt with the pouches. It's like Bucky, Seattle, 1992. <laughs> That's so awesome. Next, Nomad issue one. I guess this is, one of these is the mini and then one of them is the ongoing series. So I got both. So that, we have that. And so... All you 2099 fans out there, you know, Marvel is re releasing the 2099 books, uh, one shots that are coming back out again. And so here we have Punisher 2099, issue one, the original. Yeah, baby. Check out his freaking guns and his armor and shit. Yeah, he's packing heat. It's crazy. All right. Oh, well, we do have DC books in here. So we have these blindfolded bags right here this collector set includes robin 3 cry of the huntress 2 special moving cover second reversible cover covers by graham nolan said so this is definitely 90s just by all the gimmicks that are on here in itself so you have robin 3 you have this one right here i don't even know what's going on in these you can pull here to slowly the to reveal the cover and then you have this one my gosh look I got another one of these and then another another one there's a huntress there and then you have more <laughs> huntress and Robin 
So we got those. And then we go back to Spider-Man. And then you have Marvel Tales featuring Spider-Man to hunt the Black Fox. And his Silver Sable is on there. That's a nice cover. That's pretty cool. I love kind of like the violet like outlines around Spider-Man. Really goes well with the black. So that's cool. And then you have the first issue of the stunning new epic Thor, the mighty Thor, issue 433. There's a new Thunder God in town. That's a cool cover. Next. Oh boy. Can't go wrong with this, right? The aftermath of the Infinity Gauntlet. We have Warlock in the Infinity Watch. Love this cover. It's awesome seeing Adam Morlock with the Infinity Gauntlet. That's cool. So, follows that up with issue two of the series. Check out Drax. You see the recent return to Drax? He looks like that again. So, that's cool. And then we have issue three. The Fearsome Fates of the High Evolutionary. And then we have issue four. And then we have issue five, as it just keeps going. Old foes. And then, in case you're not sick of Infinity stuff, we have the Infinity War. So you got that on there. Nice cover, though. Always a great cover. Love seeing that image. And then we just jump into some Iron Man. Random book right there. Iron Man, issue 289. The light. At the end of the tunnel in the deadly form of the living laser. What? What is that? Like, look at that. That's something that I can do. Like, I can make that. I literally can. I probably could if I tried. 1993. Marvel Comics Presents. I love these books. That's why I picked up the Modern Day series. Because these just brought back so many memories for me. Um... All these three short stories that are inside. That's issue 44. Always revolved around Wolverine. Um, once again, one of the reasons why I got into comics, Eric Larson. Uh, this is issue 48 of that series. He did Spider-Man at that time frame. Look at that cover. Uh, I love the way he drew Wolverine and Spidey back in the day. It just looks so good, man. You got Look at the detail in the webbing. He was like a Todd McFarlane in very many ways. Um, yeah, so, so cool. So, awesome cover right there. And then you have another one um, where you have issue 49. So, you got Wolverine and Spider-Man on there. And then you have Marvel Comics Presents issue 50. So, it's a little milestone for this particular series where you have all your characters in the background right there. So, that's cool. I thought they used the exact same drawings, but they are different. So that's cool. And this is one of the first comics I've ever owned right here. I got this in New Jersey when I was about 15 years old. My grandmother bought this for me. So this is one of the series that I was introduced to. So that's really cool. Stay tuned for that origin story. Issue 54 of that same series. We have issue 55. And then we have issue 56. Again, I told you how much of a fan I was of these particular stories. And then 57. Right there. And then Marvel Comics Presents. Issue 58, the whole Weapon X saga, or I'm sorry, 82, You're a little off on that. So it has the whole Weapon X storyline in there. So there's really cool, nice looking cover. Gotta love my Firestar right there in the corner. So that's cool. And then you got more of the Weapon X story on issue 83. And then here you have 91 from the same series. Very interesting artwork right there. And then you have 93. And this this book lasted a long time. This was in 1991. 
And then here we have issue 100. So there's your milestone. Look at Wolverine just like holding the big 100. How does he hold it like that? Look, look at his arms. That's not, that's physically impossible unless you break your shoulders. <laughs> that's insane. All right. So next, we're going to kick it off with the big one. We have New Mutants, issue 87. The first appearance of Cable. Oh, boom. But it's not the real one. It's just the reprint. So, yeah, it's not worth very much. But it is a reprint. Gold cover on there. This book's in really great shape. Um, I think, what, maybe it's worth 10 bucks, if, if anything. And then we have another series that I really enjoyed. When I was a kid, this was The New Warriors. This is issue 15. This was awesome. I loved Night Thrasher and Nova. Again, Firestar was on the team, and she was one of my favorite characters. And and uh, it, just a, it was a cool series, man. I really liked it. And then here's how I was introduced to Terax. So Terax was unleashed. So I loved him. Oh, so cool, man. I love how the Marvel Comics square is breaking apart right there and then the the logo is being slashed in half so that was cool typical 90s right here nova right richard Ryder. this is big ass freaking gun and the thing's gun is even bigger and he's got a cigarette or a stogie hanging out man it's just awesome all right then next we have issue 22 all right then we have issue 25 of that series. That was really cool. Namorita's on there. So yeah, it's a it's Speedball, Darkhawk, just a fun series, you know? So yeah. Then you got some Silver Surfer stuff here. So we got Silver Surfer issue 47. Um, I loved this run back in the day. Whenever I look at a Silver Surfer series, I always compare it to this because this had the best artwork, the most action. It was during the Infinity War. It was just awesome, okay? Uh, issue 50, the 50th issue of this book. So always, again, foil cover. Got to love it back in 1990. All right, and the next one we have Death to the Emperor, the Infinity Gauntlet crossover. This is issue 53. Look at the cosmic power radiating from his fist. I think that's so cool. And then you have issue 54, another nice looking cover as you get to see Silver Surfer doing battle against the Rhino, the Rage of the Rhino. Another Infinity Gauntlet crossover. And then you have Silver Surfer issue uh, 58. Another crossover. And now the Defenders. So Silver Surfer doing battle against him. And then you have issue 59, which I think that's Thanos, but I'm not 100% sure there. But look at the details that go into that cover. Look at the, the he's like his facial expression, the um, everything that goes into the into the dirt there like his face is in the piled into the dirt so yeah that's really cool man i just it's so good i love that artwork and then we have maximum carnage Whoa! issue one the first issue right there spider-man unlimited that's what starts off the whole craziness with a carnage and kind of why we have absolute carnage today next Spider-Man vs. Wolverine. Great story. Uh, love this book. And uh, it's kind of one of the things why I got into Wolverine to begin with because of that particular issue right there. So really great. All right. So if you like She-Hulk and you have the first issue of it, it might be worth a little bit more now that they're making a, a story or a, a show to it on um, Disney+. Plus. But the one that would be worth more is her first volume. This is the second volume. This is the Jen Walters that we kind of know today uh, with that personality and breaking the fourth wall. Really great series. I feel like it's underrated. Um, here we have issue two. And issue three, guest starring Spider-Man. 
And then we have issue 33. It's hard to find some of these books. I, I would like more of the run. Uh, and then we have the all famous controversial cover of issue 34. So we have, we have that one there. It's not fair to accuse me of vanity. I just thrive on controversy. So gotta like Marvel going out there back in that day. And then we have issue 35. Issue 42. <laughs> so funny. Another nice looking cover here from Jen. Okay, I'll admit this cover has nothing to do with the story this month, but I've got to do something to sell this book. And you gotta like it. Like Marvel knew that maybe this book wasn't selling. And so they kind of like pushed the envelope by, um, you know, ex exploiting Jen Walters there a little bit. And then now we have issue 44. <laughs> now their next cover is all like covered up. It's just hilarious. And then we have issue 46. And then we have issue 50, which is a milestone cover with the foil. And then we get to see her little pendant there that says 50 on it. All right, so now we're gonna be wrapping up this books, this box with the last few books. We're gonna have issue one of Venom Funeral Prior. So we have that. Again, more gold fi uh, foil craziness right there. You can barely make out what's going on in the cover. It's so like crazy glossy brightness going on right there, right? And then you have the book that is super popular uh, right now because of the movie, and that is Venom issue one, okay? So this is from Lethal Protector. This book is in really good shape. I, I paid a decent amount of money for this one, uh, but it's in, it's in great shape. But again, another one of those foil covers, right? <laughs> and I love this, uh, it just says, oh man, <laughs> that's a Spider-Man for you. And then you have Lethal Protector. Um, issue three. So we have that one right there. And then we have part four of six, which is the first appearance of Scream. So we have that one. So that's pretty good right now because obviously Scream has made her appearance in Absolute Carnage and she's getting her own series. So there's buzz about that character again. Then we have War Machine issue one. Book's not worth shit, but it's kind of cool to have as Jim Rhodes, the armor, and the attitude. So he takes over, uh, you know, he's he's got that war machine armor, and he's pretty much in the spotlight uh, at this time. So that's cool. And then you have, what if Silver Surfer possessed the Infinity Gauntlet? So this is a really cool what if issue. Um, this one actually has a decent amount of value to it. This one was made in 1993. It would be cool, right? To see Silver Surfer have this Infinity Gauntlet. Really cool what if story. If you guys haven't had a chance to read it, you might want to try to read this one. That is a phenomenal book. All right, and then here we have X Factor. So we have X Factor issue one, which is a great story. This is for me always been the best X Factor and I've always compared it to other X Factor books. And, uh, Besides this one and then that new team that was introduced later on in the 90s, those were the best X-Factor books for me. They haven't been able to du duplicate it since. Then we have issue 25 of that series. We have another issue 25 of the series. So we have that. So we got two of them with Apocalypse on there. Then we have issue 26 of that as well. We have issue 28 of the series. And we have issue, issue 29 of the series. So, and then you have issue 30, which is like a horrible cover. <laughs> what is going on right there? Oh my God, Mutant Police. Then you have issue 50 uh, of the series. Now, I do have the first appearance of apocalypse in a different box i think 
Um, I definitely have that book. I think just think it's a little more valuable to keep than in this box for some reason. And then for some reason, I have the Uncanny X-Men in here. I have 261, which I don't know why they're not in my X-Men box. I have 263, uh, 264. And then I have last but not least, I have issue one of X-Men Unlimited. So there you guys have it. We went through this entire short box in just under 30 minutes. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this and you got to relive memory row here with Marvel Comics in the 90s. Um, I will be doing more of these uh, re-unboxings for my comic collection. And hopefully you guys, again, are having a lot of fun and enjoying my commentary on it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that bell so you don't miss any content from me, guys. And, uh, yeah, this is Mike Spider Slayer signing off. And you've been watching Comic Book Corner 2.0.